morning, everybody. Um, it's going to give everybody a few minutes just to get on and get settled and have your tea, coffee, or whatever it might be that you're drinking at this time in the morning, um, if it is the morning uh, where you are. Um, so we're not expecting any issues today. Um, so if you do experience any sound or visual, drop us a message or you can, that's, that's my first test of the day. I just accidentally muted myself. Um, drop us a message or um, try refreshing the webinar uh, by closing it and opening it again. Um, or kick the kids off Netflix if they're in the uh, next room, because I know some kids are on half turn now, aren't they? Um, that's usually the culprit. Um, the webinar today is being recorded. Um, so we'll send a follow-up email around after the webinar. Um, which will have a um, copy of the recording link um, and any other useful information. Um, so feel free to pass it on um, to anybody that you think would find it useful, any colleagues, uh, anybody else that you work with, um, and share the love if you find it useful what you're, what you're listening to today, or if you just need to go back and recap anything um, that we've discussed today. Um, we are going to do a Q&A session at the end. Um, so if you have got any questions as we're going along, feel free to fire them in. Murray might pick them up, but we definitely will pick them all up at the end. Um, so make sure you fire those questions in just into the chat box uh, at the bottom in the Q&A box. Uh, you can put something in there now if you want just to say hello. Make sure it's working. Um, so I'm going to hand it over to Murray to introduce himself and take you through the rest of the webinar today. And then I'll be back on and join you at the end for the Q&A. Brilliant. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot, David. Um, and thanks everyone for joining. Um, can kind of appreciate maybe joining a pensions webinar might not have sounded like the most exciting <laughs> topic. Um, but um, yeah, we're going to talk through some some good stuff around you know how pensions can be really valuable, can be really you know underutilized by by a lot of um, kind of accountants and employers, and you know show you a bit of, of how it kind of works with with zero and, and things like that as well. Um, but yeah, just in terms of a brief introduction, my name's Murray. Um, I am the head of workplace at Penfold. That basically means I work with um, accountants, businesses, um, fractional finance leaders, people like that. Anyone who might be involved in a pension at all, that might be processing payroll, that might be running um, kind of operations, that might be um, kind of maximizing employee experience. Um, and I'm there to kind of help them figure out if uh, Penfold is the right option for them. And if it is, get them kind of up and running with Penfold and, and kind of adding and um, using it and, and, and adding a lot of um, value there. Um, so so that's kind of me. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about, I guess, just firstly, like why pensions even exist and what auto enrollment is to kind of remind everyone, I guess, a little bit of some of the kind of compliance rules. I think that is kind of important. Um I mean, auto enrollment was largely brought in to, to fill a sort of pension savings gap. Um, the state pension is pretty hard to fund and lots of people, you know, have various different rumors that it, it might not exist in certain years or anything like that. Um, whether that's true or not, I obviously can't say. Um, and your kind of traditional defined benefit, sort of very generous pension schemes that you might have seen kind of 20, 30 years ago are a lot less common now and a lot harder to fund. So the government sort of wanted to bring in you know, automatically enrolling everyone in a, in a kind of workplace pension scheme to get them saving uh, as much as possible. Um, accountants are really important in, in this kind of auto enrollment piece. Um, a lot of people kind of think that they maybe shouldn't get involved. That's, that's kind of a common bit of feedback. Accountants say is like, I don't really want to get involved in, in auto enrollment. You know, I'm, I'm not a sort of pensions advisor, which obviously is true. And, and that would stop you giving sort of personal financial advice um, about pensions. But if you actually look at the pension regulators kind of guidance, they actually really want accountants to support and provide recommendations around auto enrollment pension schemes. So they very much delineate between helping a client you know, choose and set up the right auto enrollment pension scheme and um, advising on a personal pension scheme. And they, they kind of keep them quite separate options, which I think is important for accountants to understand and, you know, um, actually realize that they can help and, and they can support in a, in a lot more areas. Um, in terms of just some some of the basic overview of pensions, which, which some of you may already know, but I always think it's good to kind of recap. I mean, Eligible employees need to be automatically enrolled. They're usually between age 22 and, and sort of the state pension age, which right now is 68. If you have over 10,000 pounds in your salary, then that usually means you'll, you'll qualify for auto enrollment. 
Um, people out with those areas can sometimes choose to to opt in. They might um, be non-eligible. They might be eligible, but not automatically enrolled. So they can still choose to, to, to ask to be in the pension scheme. You also have certain people who might be exempt um, and it's worth just double checking and you can have a dialogue with your kind of pension provider if, if you're unsure. Um, obviously these rules might change in the future. There's some speculation that, you know, it could go down to all, all over 18s. Um, but, you know, right now that's that's kind of where we where we are in terms of people being auto-enrolled. Most of this will be done by payroll software if you use it or a payroll provider if that's what you use. Um, but it's always good to know like what the underlying kind of work is going on behind the scenes there. Um, employees have to opt out with the pension provider, which I'm sure some people will find frustrating because <laughs> the employee comes straight to them. Uh, but this is essentially like a protection mechanism the government's put in place to stop businesses basically trying to influence their employers to, to opt out or uh, to their employees to opt out. You know, the, the government's worried that potentially businesses could be putting pressure on employees, you know, forcing them to opt out or encouraging them to opt out. So that's why it has to go through the pension provider. Um, and obviously, you know I, know, I know sometimes that can be a little bit of a, of a challenge, but and I think working with your pension provider to get a good, um, you know, good process for that is, is really, really important. Um, the kind of minimum or the standard contributions that you'll probably see for most of your, your clients will be the kind of band of their salary between about roughly 6,000 to 50,000 pounds. And it's 8% of that band with 3% coming from the employer. Obviously, you know, your clients can choose to do something different. They can choose to be um, kind of, you know, put in more or, you know, do it in a slightly different way. But that's the sort of general, general kind of standard that, that we see most people, most people go for. Um, I think historically pensions have kind of been seen or a lot of accountants and, and a lot of small businesses as well see them as a sort of, probably what I'd describe as like a legal tick box. Um, and we actually did a bit of a poll with accountants and asked them a lot about, you know, like what words come to mind when you think of like an auto enrollment pension. Um, we should put in this little kind of word cloud here, but yeah, like a lot of people really just see it as this kind of, yeah, standard, basic, you know, it's a bit of an awkward kind of legal tick box that I need to do. Um, and I think that's, that's really common for small, medium businesses that they kind of view it as pretty poor experience. If you ask most employees, you know, how much money do you have in your pension? I, I think a lot of them won't be able to answer that. Some employees don't even really realize they have a pension. They probably look at a deduction on their payslip and just see it maybe as like an extra tax or something like that. Um, so yes, yeah, could be quite a like overlooked kind of service and, and offering. Um, a lot of accountants also say to us that, you know, they they get charged by the pension providers they work with. So there may be like an ongoing monthly charge from the pension provider to the client um, for what is ultimately like they feel quite a basic service. There's not really great support. It's hard to work with someone. Um, it can be obviously quite like admin intensive that you're having to do this on top of the payroll operations as well. So yeah, I think a lot of people view pensions as just this kind of compliance must have legal tick box and, and, you know, can be like a little bit painful and a little bit clunky. Um, we kind of, we really believe that people should care about their pensions and they should worry about it. And that's not just the employees, that's also like the clients and, and accountants. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that. I think one of the most important ones is, you know, basically just the cost of it. You know, this is like, as I said, 3% of the salary cost, maybe even more if your clients are doing anything more generous as a pretty expensive benefit if you compare it to, you know, other benefits like healthcare or I don't know, like a uh, free beer in the office or whatever the benefit is like this money you're putting into the pension is, is by far and away the most expensive benefit that, that you'll, you'll probably have. Um, and, you know, one thing that, that often surprises people is that when you actually kind of speak to employees, they do actually care quite a lot about the pension. If you, if you kind of explain the pension to them, a lot of people will say, yeah, I view this as part of my salary package is probably the most important benefit in that regard. And so we did a survey and we found out that 90% of employees said their pension was an important um, benefit and it actually outranked a lot of other benefits like um, health insurance, unlimited holiday, gym membership, the kind of benefits that people view as sort of glamorous and, and kind of attractive, I think. Um, but actually, you know, the pension is a, is a pretty, um, you know, powerful and, and kind of solid benefit that people do really, really care about. Um, and also, if you speak to a lot of businesses and, and employees, they will um, they'll actually say they just wish they had more support and 
like education around the pension is is they're almost too scared to talk about it with their staff because they don't really have the support they need they don't really get the the kind of um help that that they need as well so yeah um and i guess you know that's thinking a lot about your clients there is a kind of wider societal issue here where you know not very many people are actually on the right track for retirement um you know only about less than you know one in five people are kind of on on track for a good and comfortable retirement almost half of people say they, they're not confident managing their finances. There is, you know, huge amounts of money in sort of what I would describe as lost pension pots. I.e., you, you worked at a business and then you moved to a new job and you, you know, maybe are not like actively looking at the old pension and you kind of forget about it. There's a just billions and billions of pounds, you know, in that. So there is this huge societal problem as well around pensions. Um, and I guess just to, to explain who we are and like why we kind of want to be involved in this is, um, you know, we're a we're a pension company. We're a modern technology um company that trying to do auto enrollment. Um, for us, really important part of this is the kind of employee experience and actually getting those employees engaged in their pension. Um, we do that primarily through having a really modern and engaging app. Um, so it sits on their phone. They can, you know, get notified when they get paid. They can. Um, see where their money is invested. They can find their old pensions. They can combine them all into one place um, and just really kind of look and, and use their pension in a much more kind of active way. It, a lot of employees now obviously will do their banking and if they do any investing, they'll do that on their phone and they'll be really used to that style of experience. So then asking them to keep a letter from their pension provider, which is how some other pension providers work, feels very old fashioned. So we wanted to kind of fix, address and, and kind of change that. Um, and we think that's really important and a really good way to, to kind of do it. Um, if you do have clients who, who don't use smartphones, they can still log in on the website or receive a letter if they choose to. But we think most people kind of nowadays are, are keen to, to manage it um, in that way. Um, another important thing, I, I think, with the pension is the support and the kind of human side to it. So it's great to have like good digital products, but ultimately your pension is related to your um, your personal life, your employee experience, you know, your retirement, maybe how you're planning your finances, you know, being able to speak to a person about that is really important. We offer a dedicated sort of support and account manager for all accountants and their clients. So if your clients, for example, wanted to have a talk at the end of the tax year about how they could potentially utilize their pension in a tax efficient way um, and how it could be used, then, you know, Penfold will come in and do a talk about that. Some of the clients we work with want to offer a salary sacrifice scheme to their businesses. Um, some of the accounts we work with, they, they, they want to say to their clients, you know, you could be using salary sacrifice to save some national insurance tax. Um, but it's Penfold who can come in and do the talk about um, salary sacrifice and how it works. And we think by engaging them in that sort of, um, you know, human support way and, and coupling that with the app, we can um, really help help people um, kind of really manage their, get on top of their finances. Um, and yeah, I guess, um, you know, we, we understand, you know, you have important um, partners like Zero and a lot of technology you, you use and will sit on there. So we integrate with, with um, accounting technology like that so that you don't need to be manually uploading data or information or, or anything like that. And um, so that's a little bit about us and, and kind of, how we see pensions and, and how we want to try and address that and fix that. Um, yeah, so so I think I think most people here will will potentially use zero maybe for payroll or maybe for for other for other for other areas. Um, Penfold can sit um directly alongside your zero account, and you won't have to do any like manual uploading or even you don't even have to click a button to send any data to us. Um, we can receive. Uh, pension data directly from your zero account we just pull that through and um, so it's completely kind of automated in the background you don't need to worry about that and um, if you use any other pension schemes uh, alongside zero payroll you probably end up having to manually upload information and, and send it through so um, even if it is integrated I know people still have to log into pension providers but you don't have to do that with us everything just comes through zero and we take the direct debit um, automatically so it's a really simple process um, it's had a lot of coverage in XV Magazine um, and happy to share any of this information with anyone who is interested to, to learn a bit more. Um, we do have a, um, a number of accountants who are already using this um, as their um, 
kind of primary um, payroll and, and pension setup. Um, so they're automating everything kind of already um, and kind of happy with how it is so far. Um, yeah, I will just play this video in the background whilst I'm doing it just to show you how it actually looks, but more than happy to go into this on a call with anyone if they are interested in a bit more detail. But essentially, you have to do a one-off connection with Zero to start everything off. Um, so we'll send you a link. Um, and then that basically allows you to connect your zero account um, with your Penfold account, just so we've got all the kind of um, uh, security clearances and purposes to, to access the data that we need to access. Um, we'll basically want to confirm with you like what the business is and also what the first um, kind of payroll run is, like what the date is for that. Um, and once um, we've done that, so that's what we're displaying here, is like what the payroll is. Um, first payroll run is um but once we've done that and um, then we can basically like sync everything up with your zero so you don't need to be um kind of logging in every month or every week and um, once you've processed everything in zero then we just take all the data from there and so it could be a really kind of seamless and straightforward process you don't need to be logging in all the time we're doing everything in the background if anything does happen you can also disconnect from zero as well um so yeah it can be a really seamless way to, to kind of manage your um, manage your payroll and pension kind of operations. Um, yeah, I think um, I kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but I, I do think this is a really important thing and, and something to think about, you know, even if you're not interested in Penfolds, is maybe just what is happening, um, you know, what options you're getting right now from any pension partner you might work with. Um, and I would kind of encourage you to to kind of push for more engagement from them um, because I think, I think pensions are... Um, you know, they do need someone to, to kind of explain them to, to most employees. You know, you think about your average employee, they don't really get a kind of education in pensions or like no one ever sits them down and explains how it works. Um, so we think this kind of offering informational insight, webinars um, can really help. You know, we're already looking at doing some with our accounting partners for up and coming budget changes um, where we'll, you know, it'll be under the accountant's brand, but it'll actually be Penfold presenting on like what some of the changes are. Um, for example, you know, if, if things are changing in the investment markets and people are seeing changes in their pension, then, then that can also be a really interesting one um, to, to sort of talk about as well. Um, yeah, so every, every client gets access to this um, and um, yeah, they have, they have a named kind of contact they can have. We also do a lot of um, resources and kind of documents, guidelines, things like that, that, that people can share internally as well um, to, to kind of talk through it. Um, yeah, I guess to go over maybe some of the um, just kind of administrative side of, of having Penfold and, and why that can be helpful. Um, so we're completely free for uh, your clients and for you as a business, um, uh, for accountants, for advisors. Um, we don't charge anything there. There's no setup cost or, or cost there. Our revenue model is just charging like a small percentage on the assets in the pension pot. So the same as someone like a Nest Pension, if, if you know who they are. Um we, yeah, we work with BlackRock and HSBC to provide the funds that we use. Um, so it's not actually Penfold who, who manage the funds and we use BlackRock's um, kind of scale and, and um, great investment options there. Um, we publish a report every quarter that basically looks at Penfold's default investment performance versus other major kind of workplace pension uh, default funds. I'm really proud that over the last five years, we've, we've kind of outperformed all the major workplace pension funds. Obviously, I can't sit here and guarantee future performance, but more than happy to share those reports with anyone who is interested in the investing side um, of their pension, where that might be, how that might work. Um, I think it's a really important thing that a lot of people maybe don't realize that their their money is actually invested and, and um, they, they do actually have, have returns on that. Um, and yeah, I guess, you know, on that more kind of societal problem and the challenges of pensions, um, you know, we've helped a lot of people with finding those old pension pots. I said there was billions in lost pension pots. Right now, we've helped people find about 350 million on, you know, in lost pensions that they didn't know about. They were tracking it down in the app. Um, and yeah, we're working really hard to obviously get as much of that in as possible um, and get more of that in as possible. Um, but yeah, really important to us as well. Um, and we see roughly about 80% of people who have Penfold are logging into their account every few months, um, which we think is a really healthy amount to be checking in on your pension. You probably don't need to be checking it every day, but um, it's really great to see people kind of using it regularly and 
actually like engaging with with this benefit that as i say is, is a very expensive benefit um yeah got lots of accountants using us and talking about us i'm happy if people want to be connected to, to any accountant using us and, and speak and understand a bit more about how they're using it to, to to talk about it in a bit more detail um yeah just as we're kind of wrapping things up i wanted to um quickly talk about the budget coming up in in the next week basically um and maybe some like speculative changes or things to watch out from the pension more from the pension point of view um i think potentially the biggest one will be if they put the employer and um, national insurance charge on um on employer pension contributions um that'll be a really interesting one i can kind of understand why the government may be looking at it as a potential option um obviously that will affect you know your client's costs but i think another big thing is the um if you look at schemes like salary sacrifice schemes or directors who pay into their pension and um, as a kind of way of reducing their corporation tax bill this is obviously going to change the kind of calculations for them so i think it'll be quite an interesting one to to kind of keep an eye on if they keep the nic rates the same or if they change it it will be yeah just quite interesting to see what they do and it'll be important i think to be able to communicate that you know what that changes out to your clients and also the employees if salary sacrifice or similar schemes are are something that you offer um the amount you can um kind of take out of your pension uh as your kind of allowance when you do come to retirement right now um that's 25 percent of the kind of a million pension pot size and so you can take this kind of like roughly like 260k out um there is talk that that could get changed and they could change that ever so slightly. I'm not sure if they will, um, but that's one to definitely keep an eye on. Obviously only affects people who maybe are, are getting close to drawing down, but um, that, that also could be quite a big bulk of, of your client base. Um, all the speculation that they might change the tax relief on the pension contributions and maybe reduce like the upper rate of tax relief, although it does sound more recently in the rumors like they're not going to do that. Um, but again, just one to, to kind of stay mindful of and, and keep keep it keep in interest. Um, and I just wanted to also talk about this thing that uh, was actually discussed in the last um, government's budget. Um, they did a consultation and they're still doing the con a consultation into um, what you might call it pot follows member kind of pension style which would be quite a big change now i'm not saying this is going to come in in the next months or anything like that um but yeah the the last government wanted to look at the idea of instead of a business setting up a kind of workplace scheme for um for themselves and then all the employees getting auto enrolled in that that they would actually have each employee would have an individual pension and then um, they would take that to all their different jobs and ask the uh, employer to pay into that instead. So this is kind of a similar model to what they do in Australia. Um, and they actually do it quarterly in Australia to kind of deal with the admin hassle of, of monthly uh, payments and contributions. Um, now, obviously, probably quite a lot of people on the call will be the poor kind of payroll administrator or someone in your team will be the poor payroll administrator that may have to deal with this. So it's quite interesting to to kind of think about what the implications would be for that and because i can see the advantage for potential employees to actually have um you know more engagement with their pension thinking about it a little bit more um but i think the uh obviously the um you know the actual administrative um running of that could be a, could be a big challenge but it's a it's an interesting consultation to see what's happening and keep following um a lowest change of government you know maybe maybe it's kind of lost a bit of momentum there but i think it's an interesting one just to uh, keep in the top of your mind that, that that may be something that comes up in the future um and yeah who knows maybe other things will change as well these are just some things to watch out for but um yeah try not to make too many political predictions as you never quite know what's going to happen or maybe nothing will happen who knows um Perfect. That was everything I wanted to cover um, in terms of my sort of like presenting and, and my talking to, to everyone. Um, I can see a couple of questions have come through, but I actually can't read the questions. <laughs> yeah, um, that's fine. Do you want me to? Do me yeah, to yeah, I can, I can cover them. The only thing I was yeah. just going to say is feel free to put any more questions in, but I also appreciate sometimes with pensions and things, people maybe don't want to share questions in like a public forum. So I've also put my email address in here for, for anyone if they want to follow up one on one as well. Perfect. Nice one. Thanks, Murray. So, yeah, so we've got a question here. So uh, the question is saying that they missed the first sort of 10 minutes of the webinar. Um, so firstly on that, um, the webinar has been recorded. So you'll get a copy of that through as well at the end. So you can go back and watch any bits um, that you've missed. 
but they just wanted to uh, touch on the piece about the integration with zero. So I don't know if you mm-hmm. just want to quickly touch on that in terms of just outline the integration with zero and, and the transition of information that goes between the two. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you, if you watch the recording back, there is a, there's a kind of quick uh, video overview. Um, but essentially, the you can add Penfold from the Zero app marketplace to your Zero account. You have to sync us up once to kind of get all the information shared. We send you a link basically, and then you follow that link and you basically sync that client's um, information with Penfold. And then from there on, we're pulling all the data live basically. So you don't need to log into Penfold basically ever again. Um, you still can, obviously, if you do need to check anything. Um, but we, we're syncing all the data in line with your payroll runs. And so you don't need to be like clicking submit or doing anything. We're just getting all the data live from there. Um, so yeah, it's a really, it's a really quick, quick and like seamless way to actually sync everything up with zero payroll. Yeah, perfect. Uh, and just one other question, uh, they just ask in, can you just clarify what the charges are for yep. using Penfold? Yeah, so there's no cost to the business or to the accountants. There's no setup cost or anything like that. Our only fee is basically an annual management charge on the assets that you have in the pot. So we charge 0.75%. Um, it does drop to 0.4% if you have above um, a certain level of assets in your pot. Um, so essentially, if you have a £1,000 in your pension, we'll take £7.50 out for the year. It's, it's basically the way it works. So it's quite a simple yes. charging structure. Perfect, nice one. And that's all the questions answered. So thanks for that, Murray. Um, And yeah, I encourage anybody to email Murray on the email address there if you've got any more questions uh, that are are not shown. So I think that's it, unless you've got anything else to to run through. No, that was me. But yeah, please do reach out if you do have any questions that you don't want to share. And you can also, there's a lot of information on XU and a lot of information um, on our website as well about Penfold and the Zero integration. So definitely check it out. Yeah, definitely. Perfect. Nice one. Thank you for that. And thank you, everyone, for jumping on and have a great rest of your day. Thanks very much, everyone. Thanks. Bye.